In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, beloved of God, and welcome. Today is Friday, the 10th of September, 2021. It is Friday of the 23rd week in Ordinary Time, Church Year B. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, and verses 12 to 14. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 16. The response to the psalm is, It is you, O Lord, who are my portion. The gospel is taken from St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 39 to 42. I read from the first reading. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope, to Timothy, my true child in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank him who has given me strength for this, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful by appointing me to his service, though I formerly blasphemed and persecuted and insulted him. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, thank you very much. You are the Savior with the spiritual touch. Praise you, praise your holy name. Since you touched my life, I've never been the same. Well, in my darkness, you are my light. Pain and confusion, you guide me alright. I sing sweet Jesus, you are the Christ. And in my blindness, you're such a beautiful sight. Thank you, thank you very much. You are the Savior with the spiritual touch. Praise you, praise your holy name. Since you touched my life, I've never been the same. Well, in my darkness, you are my light. Pain and confusion, you guide me alright. I sing sweet Jesus, you are the Christ. And in my blindness, you're such a beautiful sight. Thank you, thank you very much. You are the Savior with the spiritual touch. Praise you, praise your holy name. Since you touched my life, I've never been the same. Well, in my darkness, you are my light. Pain and confusion, you guide me alright. Since we Jesus, you are the... The theme for today's meditation is... Always give thanks to God for all you are and have. Always give thanks to God for all you are and have. Beloved of God, the first reading is from St. Paul's first letter to Timothy. St. Paul met Timothy during his second missionary journey and he became Paul's companion and missionary partner along with Silas. He was a respected member of the Christian congregation. Paul's letters to Timothy are mainly pastoral, giving instructions on leadership, as Timothy 
was the leader of the Christian community. In this portion of the letter, St. Paul explains to Timothy that all we are and have are gifts from God. Therefore, we should always render gratitude to God and we have no reason to be proud. No one is deserving by right of who we are or what we own, especially if we consider and remember that we are all sinners. This St. Paul explains. It is Christ Jesus who appointed him in service. Paul was quite an intelligent fellow and a fearless preacher, yet he acknowledges that it is by God's mercy, not because of his intelligence or zeal, because he was formerly a blasphemer, but for God's grace and mercy. St. Paul renders gratitude and thanks to God, but for God, he would not have been what he was. Similarly, dear friends in Christ, what can we do and who can we become or what can we have were it not for God's grace and mercy? It is an invitation, therefore, not to boast or point to ourselves for our achievements, rather to render all thanks and glory to God. But for Him, we are nothing, absolutely nothing. For this, the psalm of today says, it is you, O Lord, who are my portion. Out of God, we are nothing. So those of us who are proud and boastful of our achievements and of who we are, remember, if God takes away his mighty hands of blessing from us, we will just see how useless we are. It is not by your might. So remember, in all things, in who you are and what you have, render thanks and gratitude to God. So do not think your success in business or academics is because you are too intelligent or because you are a business guru and magnet. God has just been faithful to you. The Lord has been your portion. So render thanks to Him. Do not think your political career or social strides is because you are too smart. God has just been blessing you. If he takes away his hands of blessing from you, you will just discover you are nothing. In this, therefore, remember like St. Paul that the Lord is your portion and out of him you are nothing. Give him all the glory and all the thanks. In his first letter to the Corinthians, St. Paul asks, What do you have that was not given to you? And if it was given to you, why do you boast as though you did not receive it? Confer 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. All we have is not by our making, dear friends, no, but by God's blessings. Please, we beg of you, always point to God for all you are and have. He has just been merciful. He has been gracious to you. He has blessed you. Even the Christian that you are, it is all by his grace and mercy. In the gospel, Jesus gives another twist to leadership. A blind man cannot lead another. This means you must yourself be of clear vision to be able to lead another. How can you, Jesus asks, help someone to be good when you are yourself not good? To take a splinter out from your brother's eye, the log in your own eye must first be taken out. This implies two things. First, that we must first be able to see our own mistakes and clear ourselves of our mistakes before we can be able to lead others. If you are blind to your own faults, if you are not sensitive to your own errors, you cannot be able to help others see their own mistakes. So it calls for humility first to be able to beat your breast to say, yes, these are my own mistakes. And when you are able to acknowledge your own faults, 
then you can be able to help others see their own mistakes. Many times, we have a certain holier-than-thou attitude which does not help neither us nor those whom we want to correct. If you are not first able to realize that you are yourself a sinner liable to mistakes and to be able to clear yourself of your mistakes, you will not be able to help others realize their own faults. So Jesus says, take out the log from your own eye, then you will be able to see the splinter in your brother's eye. This also means that you see in yourself even a worst sinner. Then you can be able to help your brother or your sister who is a lesser sinner. But often we think we are the holy ones and they are the sinners. St. Paul will always say, Christ Jesus came to save sinners and he, Paul, is the greatest of them all. Dear friends, till we realize that we are ourselves sinners and perhaps, and true enough, even the worst of them all, we cannot be able to help others in their own weaknesses. So, take off the log from your own eye, then you'll be able to see the splinter in your brother or sister's eye. See your own grave mistakes before you can be able to help your brother or sister see their little mistakes. Secondly, we must be able to lead by example till we are ourselves freed from the mistakes for which we accuse others, we cannot lead them. So before you take out the splinter from your brother's eye, take out the log in your own. Before you point out the mistake that your brother commits, be certain and clear that you are yourself void of the mistake. For the best teacher is your good example. So ask yourself, do you judge and condemn others? Do you quickly point out your mistakes like a correcting fluid? Or are you first of all aware of the fact that you are yourself a good example by your own life? Then can you be able to lead others to perfection? Let us pray for that grace that like St. Paul always admonished Timothy, we may be good leaders. First, by accepting our own mistakes, realizing that we are ourselves even the worst of sinners, and then clearing our mistakes, we can be the perfect example that we want others to emulate. Dear God, we beg of you for that grace, not to see ourselves too righteous and better than others, but to see ourselves sinners in need of your grace, and to know that even if we have succeeded to fight our weaknesses, it is thanks to you, thanks to your mercy, and let us be patient with others to help them come out of their own mistakes. Amen. Catholic meditation with me, Father blessed. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you.